I don't think I've ever covered this. I generally explore the neighborhood every morning. Either I walk by myself or walk with a friend. And usually I leave a bit earlier and it's a little bit darker. And that's why I wear my cold shoes. But it's about 6, 6.30 now, so I think I can turn them off. Last week I was walking through the neighborhood and spotted a bobcat and had an eye to eye with him. If I see anything cool, I'll show you guys. driving the Nissan Armada. Slightly different than the 370Z I had the last time, as in this is like 10 times the amount of car. But I'm driving through Malibu, going northbound, uh, going up to Bluffs Park, uh, meeting up with a, a gentleman that I met as I was driving uh, south the other day. His family was parked on the side of the road. They had this, uh, not a classic Mercedes, it's got a really interesting story. He's gonna be uh, ride of the week for the Malibu Surfside News local paper here in town. And we're gonna drive with him, get a little bit of his story. It's a one car owner, but it's been through a lot of interesting things. So we'll meet up, I'll introduce you to this guy, and we'll have a little bit of driving fun. I just passed the Malibu Theater and I saw that Fast and Furious 8, uh, Furious 8, I think that's what it's called, BAM! Kathy and I are gonna go see that and we're gonna take you guys along with us. I'm not gonna be jumping over buildings to go see it though, but we will just like drive there normal, you know, just like normal driving. Raymond and this is Russell 
And and we ran into each other by by accident. Yes. Uh, yeah. On randomly on Pacific Coast Highway up north. I was driving along. I pulled off to get some shots of the 370 I was driving. And you guys happened to be in the in the parking lot there. Yes. We almost didn't end up going that way. But my wife was like, just show him that that point with the rock. I'm like, you know, the one one where I wanted to propose to you at, and you said no. That's a dirty parking lot. <laughs> Non-amazing cars are not viewed as amazing, mm -hmm. or you know what I mean, if that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah. And we have a 1998 E320, 19, 19 years, years ago. ago. 19 years and, ago. And you know, it was his first, he's not a showy guy, uh -huh. so we went to the dealership and I was like, let's get the sports car. He's like, no. I'm like, let's get the V8. He said, no. And he went right for this very subdued six-cylinder E-Class. He goes, no, that's my car. And I was like, Okay. Well, I picked this one because it was really felt like me. Yeah. But also, it, it came a point in my time. I have three children. Sure. So now, after buying station three, wagons. three consecutive like years Buicks. of five-year increments right. of American station wagons, now it was Dad's turn. Uh, yeah. I would like to test drive the car. He says, hand me the keys. I says, you going? He says, no. So I took the car out, drove it about a mile, <laughs> came back, sat down with him. I says, aren't you going to try and like, sell me the car? He says, no. It takes care of it itself. <laughs> I says, it did. I'm buying the car. <laughs> pay attention the more of them you realize you see every day yeah it's it's one of those cars that you just ignore it's, a, it's an well i don't know <laughs> you know what i mean like no it's okay you don't but it's an autobahn killer you know it's this this car could run at 140 160 yeah. all day long yeah that's what it's meant to do yeah. think of this car as like your kindergarten teacher like they're not an action hero they're not you know leaping over buildings they're not the rock they're not vin diesel yeah. but but they're there every day and they take care of you every day. That's true. And they get you through life, and you don't really appreciate that. But you could do that stuff yeah. to this car if you really wanted to. I've <laughs> seen people do stuff yes. like that to this to, car. To, I would think more like maybe the 420. Make them a little scary. As a side note, yeah, you you had a bun in the oven, and now it's out. Yes, and we drove them home from the hospital. Congratulations in this, in this car. Yes. In this car. So that and so in in 1998 when you. When your dad bought this car, how old were you? I think I was, I'm 37 now. Okay. Oh my God, I think I'm... Somebody do the math. It's not going to be me. Is it a son? Daughter? Yeah, son. Son? Is he going to ride in this car in 17 years? I, I hope so. He's named Leo after my grandfather. This was my grandfather's ring. I'm wearing it. has an LW on it. Nice. So, I do hope so. It's a daily driver survivor. Sure. Not a cream puff. Well, sure. Get a house in Brooklyn and then a house in the Hamptons. And he would, I would get out of high school on Friday. And my mom and sister already be out there, and he would pick me up at school, or I'd meet him at the house, and we'd drive, and we stopped at this Bennigan's, and it was the same waitress every Friday, and I used to get the Monte Cristo sandwich. And it's, it sounds like there's not much of a story there, but <laughs> I I mean, if you really, in my mind, you know, a story that really touches your heart. Oh yeah, I we agree. We did that every, yeah. for two years, I think we did that. Dad bought the car in 98. Yes. And you had mentioned that it was in an accident or something. Okay, so, you know, the way to sum this car up is very quickly is one father buys it cash, one sister drives it not so well, one sister-in-law drives it with two kids, sits out in the New York for 17 winters, gets on a trailer to California, pulled out of your garage, driving to the DMV, old lady whacks into it, <laughs> Geico declares it total, get a salvage title, waste a ton of money, put it back on the road. <laughs> so, wow, that yeah. is the most concise, detailed yeah. uh, <laughs> story of a car, life of a car I've seen so far. <laughs> I, I, she, sure, she was. She got out of the car and she's like, are you all right, honey? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine, how are you? Yeah. And I'm just like, and I just went like this. <laughs> and I called my dad, he's like, what? I'm like, the car, the front end is crushed, power steering fluid, water, Everything was just, the car bled out in the sidewalk like a, yeah. a, like a chest wound, yeah. a gunshot. It was dead. And, uh, but it was too good to let go. You guys wanted to keep it. it you know, it, it had done its job. You know, would you leave your brother on the side of the road if he got, if he got shot at the <laughs> leg? You know. All right, 
in the back now with Raymond, uh, the, the the real expert of this whole deal. Right? <laughs> the original. <laughs> the original. Why Mercedes as opposed to BMW or any other German well, I brand? Te I test drove them all. Okay. And this one just felt like home. The only thing uh, I would have done because of living on the East Coast was have uh, the format. This car, the series, I think, was only made for four or five years. And it has a timeless design to it. Yeah. Not to mention that. How much was this when it was new? $54,000. Good luck in getting a, a new Mercedes for $54,000. You know, add add 100 to it, and that would be good. That would be bad. And it was a very slight snow falling oh, yeah. down on the roads just to make it slippery enough. Oh, yeah. And I was going over an overpass where there was black ice, which I could not see. Right. The car spun out, yeah. totally <laughs> made a 360 on the road, and went over on the side. And I will never forget the feeling that I had. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't stop it. I have no control. But I know I will survive this in this car. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so that's the truth. And it's like the ultimate roller coaster ride. Yeah, but I said I'm going to survive it. Yeah, because of, the, of this car. Right, the right. way it was built. The next week, I went out and bought a little, little diecast model of this car. Yeah, and I hit it with a hammer like 15 <laughs> times, and I put it on the dining room table in front of him. We were having like some kind of family dinner, and he goes. You have a really messed up sense of humor. <laughs> any last words uh, to uh, Mercedes owners? Uh, anybody you want to say hi to? Um, I would like to, I'd love to get a special badge or a letter from Mercedes fans like all those other cars because this car has been in our family for 19 years and it's been a member of the family. How many, mi how many miles are on the car? 140. It should be a lot more. Yeah, 140. But it's, it's whoever made it, you spend time thinking about it. It's an excellent car. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It shows up every day and keeps running. And we're very grateful. For it. Awesome. Awesome. It's a member of the family. It'll yeah. be here for quite a while to come. Yeah, hopefully my son will be driving it. Thank you, guys. But thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Back at the pad. I'm gonna grab Kathy, get in the Nissan Armada, and go see Fast and Furious 8. I hope it's good. You looking forward to this movie? Yeah. Fast and Furious 8, otherwise known as Fast 8 or Fate of the Furious or whatever you want to call it. My feeling is it's going to go way over the top. Uh, yeah. Considering, uh, I just read an article recently where they're considering new options for the next one, and that would be Fast and Furious meets Jurassic Park. That's stupid. How about Fast and Furious and I Love Lucy? It could happen. Say anything like that. End <laughs> the series. What? And go buy an island. End the series and go buy an island. Yeah. It's like put while you're ahead. Hmm. That would be Death of the Furious. Oh, or yeah, they could all get killed. They could all die at once. That would be good. Big explosion. Yeah. But do the right at the beginning of the movie and then it says the end. Fast and Furious 8, freaking awesome. It was good. It was awesome.